Hello, everyone. This is Coach Jackie Zach, and I'm excited to have Candy Slaminski from KJ Group LLC with us today. Candy was born and raised in Massachusetts, mostly Brockton, which is 30 miles south of Boston. She currently lives in Winnicani, correct? Correct. Did I pronounce that right? Excellent. Yep. Wisconsin, which is much, much smaller than the city that you grew up in. You have three grown children who have all moved away four grandchildren from your oldest daughter and a boyfriend who's also your business partner. And he lives in Van Dyne, Van Dyne, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, Candy's the CEO and majority partner of KJ Group LLC, which has two distinct divisions, to impress and Fox Valley Team Sports. And we're going to learn a little bit more about those uh, later on. She's actually, you're actually a pretty good windsurfer, although you need a new sail so you haven't gotten out in the last couple of years. Uh, when you're not windsurfing, when it's not an option, you like to learn new things. She's currently learning Spanish with Duolingo and taking an online JavaScript course. She is most proud that she went from a teen mom living in a homeless shelter to the proud mom of three successful ad adults and CEO of your own company. I can't wait to hear your story. And I'm learning learning Italian with, with Duolingo. Are so you really? I am. So it's very interesting. What and it is my, yeah, my pleasure to welcome Candy to the show today. Hey, Candy. Hi, Jackie. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Sure. I'm excited to be here a little bit. So tell us a little bit about your personal story. Um, well, like you said, I was born and raised in Brockton, Mass. I'm an East Coast girl um, originally. Um, I was raised by my mom, and she was a single mom, and I had two older siblings, a sister and a brother, um, and we grew up um, fairly poor, um, you know, kind of lived in the hood, um, so we were, we were pretty scrappy, you know, we learned how to get along <laughs> on not a lot of stuff, um, we learned how to be frugal, and um, my mom was a hard worker, so she really instilled in all of us, like, work ethic, hard work ethic, that if you want to get out of a situation, if you want to improve your situation, you really need to work for it. You really need mm -hmm. to um, put your effort out there. And she always encouraged us to stay in school. Um, just because this is where we're at in life now, it's not where you have to be or stay. Um, you can always improve. So that was always what I grew up on, just how can I improve? What can we do different? How can I learn more? How can I be better? Um, and so that's what I did. I studied a lot. And, um, and here I am today. <laughs> That is um, awesome. Yeah. So, so you, you know, let's talk a little bit about how, where did you, how did you get where you are professionally? Or, um, or in other words, how did you get to decide that you wanted to buy or start a company? Um, I never really set out to buy or start a company. I never really had that thought in my head. I always thought I'd be like some corporate person, but I always thought I would be, you know, C-suite and work for somewhere. Um, but it just kind of, it started with fitness classes. Honestly, it was kind of, um, a passion of mine. I love doing fitness classes. Jane Fonda, um, was a big <laughs> fan of hers and I always went to fitness classes and I always thought, you know, I could do that and I could probably do it pretty well. I really enjoy it. And I've got more energy than these people. I could really do this. And that was when I was young. Um, and then when I was a little older, about 1920, I actually took certification courses to get my fitness instructor certificate and I got it and I, it kind of got put on the back burner. I was going through some personal things, so I didn't get to use it right away. Um, but then when I, I got married at 23 and moved up to Wisconsin, actually, um, I was able to use it. I got a job at the Y and started teaching fitness classes and I did really good and I really enjoyed it. And then we moved to Iowa. My husband got another job in Iowa. So I moved on to Iowa and I'm like, well, I gotta continue doing this. So I started doing fitness classes again. And it just so happened that um, I was offered an opportunity to do independent fitness classes um, mm -hmm. on my own and contract myself out to different businesses and the rec department and the city and things like that. So I was like, well, that's cool. I can do that. Um, so I did it. No, I didn't realize I was like doing a business. I didn't realize that I was like starting a business. I just did it because I wanted to do the fitness classes. So I started doing that mm -hmm. and I did it for a long, for about 12 years. Um, and in between there though, I did get another job. I got an office job while I was teaching my classes just to make more money. Um, and I was doing office work for a manufacturing company in Iowa, a metal craft. 
and they do barcode labels and um, help inventory management and that kind of stuff. And so I learned that industry and I did that for five years, still doing my fitness classes. And my husband got another job back in Wisconsin. <laughs> so off we go again, we moved back to Wisconsin because um, we really did want to go back there. And I was like, uh oh, now I need another job. So it just so happened, serendipity, right? My whole my whole career has really just been opportunity that has been presented to me and I've just taken it. Um, so when we were getting ready to move, the company I worked for had an open inside sales position that was remote. And I oh. said, well, I'm gonna be remote <laughs> and I do inside sales here, so can I just do that? And they said, sure, you can do that. Um, so I did that once we moved to Wisconsin and I really grew the territory. The territory was really broad. It was Massachusetts, it was Canada, it was Hawaii, it was Alaska, it was everywhere. Wow. I was a lot and, and I was expected to just be more inside sales. But to be honest, I like traveling and the opportunity to spend it all. So I started traveling. I started going to Canada. I started going to Massachusetts. I started going to these areas and the territory just took off. Um, my sales exploded. Um, and I was an independent when I was doing the inside sales. I was an independent sales person doing this. So it was another business. I didn't realize it. Now I had two businesses. Didn't even realize <laughs> what I was running. This. I was like, oh, well, I can do this. Um, so I was an independent sales rep. Did great. Um, and they even said, you know, you're doing a lot of traveling. I said, yeah, I enjoy the traveling. They're like, you're not really required to, but okay, you know, if you want to. Um, and so then they offered me more territory where I could travel locally. They said, would you like to, and, and in the meantime, I grabbed other companies. So I took on, you know, a software company to add to the labels. I took on a hardware company to add to the labels. So now I was going into companies and presenting full solutions. Okay, so wow. we were, I was talking to the CEO and the CFO and the engineers and saying, okay, let's look at your processes, look at your inventory, um, and let's see where we can find improvement. Um, these are how I think it's going to improve. And so I'm, me, you know, fitness instructor, you know, inside sales, offering the CEOs and, you know, advice on how to better run their businesses. Um, I just, it just came natural to me. So I started doing that. It just grew, it exploded. Um, I loved it. I started traveling. I was to Canada and Massachusetts all the time. Um, Chicago was part of my new territory. Minnesota was part of my new territory. Wisconsin, of course I got Wisconsin too. Um, and it just, it grew. And then, um, I met my boyfriend, uh, my boyfriend, Jim, and he had his own business doing sporting goods and screen printing. And I was a sales rep. And he said, would you like to be a sales rep for me? Sure. I can do that. <laughs> sporting goods. That's right up there with inventory management. I can do that too. So I started repping for him. So I had the labels and the hardware and the software and the sporting goods. And I was doing all this stuff and traveling and it was great. And I was living my best life. And it just so happened, again, serendipity opportunity where the two of the companies that I was representing, the hardware and the software, decided to bring all their reps in house. And so they got rid of their independence. And even though I was given the opportunity to go in house, I obviously did not want to, so I could not. Um, I still represent the label company, and they ended up doing the same thing. They said. Oh, wow. So I'm like, okay. So I went from all these companies that I'm representing. And it was just the way the market was. It really was just an industry-wide thing. All of the companies mm -hmm. were starting to bring things closer to their chest, a little bit more control. Um, and even though my sales were good and they even said, you, you could actually probably stay independent and would let you because you are doing so well. Um, but they didn't want me to do anything else. They didn't want me oh, to represent sure. anyone else. Sure. Um, and to throw into that, in the meantime, I, was, I went back to school I never got a college degree, I decided I would go back to school and get my associates in marketing. Since I was giving all this advice to all these people, I figured I should have some credentials. <laughs> so <laughs> I went back to school, right? And so I got my marketing, my associates in marketing, and one of my projects was pick a local small business and do a marketing plan for them. So of course I took my boyfriend's business. I said, I'm gonna do your business. And my marketing plan was what else can we add to your offerings to increase your sales. How can we increase sales? And what what presented itself was promotional products and um, ad incentives and things like that. Um, he, he didn't have any interest. 
in doing it. And even though the project was a success, I got an A. Um, nice. He had, no <laughs> um, he had no interest. He said it doesn't fit with what I do. I do sporting goods. We work with sport teams. We work, you know, with schools. There's, there's, we're not doing that. And I said, but you know, it's a really good project. It's a really good idea. I proved it out. I want to do it. And I have the time now because I don't have these other companies I'm representing. I want to do it. And he's like, fine, do it. I will. I said, I will. So I did. And to impress was born. So now I had to impress. I still had my sales agency because I was still doing the label company sales. And so I was doing those in tangents. Uh, the to impress was more of a side hustle at that time. So I was still really focused on the label sales. And they were still giving me the opportunity to be independent. So I took it. Um, and this this grew, the True Impress grew way, way faster than I ever anticipated, way more than I ever anticipated. Um, I didn't, re I mean, I knew there was a need and I knew the project said that there was a, you know, it's a huge industry. It's a, you know, internationally, it's a $26 billion industry. In the right. US alone, it's $17.8 billion industry. So even just a small fraction of that industry is pretty good money if you can make it. So. I really, it just took off and I, I enjoyed it. And then that's when the label company came back and said, all right, so now you're spending way too much time on that. We need you to either come with us or, or we need to cut ties. So it's a choice. Do I want to do the sales or do I want to do my business? And then I'm going to do this, you know? So now I went from three businesses <laughs> and the two businesses, I still learn the business classes. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how it all grew. And then my wow. boyfriend had a business partner. His business partner at that exact same time started to the opportunity. It's just crazy how it just comes together. He decided he didn't want to own a business. He left. So it's just my boyfriend by himself, me doing my to impress by myself. And he said, you know what? Why don't we just kind of bring them together under one umbrella? Um, you know, we'll keep them separate because we have different market bases and it's different right. marketing and it's different customer base, really. Um, but he said we can do it together that way. He has production expertise, I have sales expertise. Um, just kind of combine those for both businesses together. And so KJ Group LLC was born. Just like wow. that. I had no plans. I never, I really did not set out to do any of it. It just kind of all just happened. Wow. Well, it sounds like you you know opportunities. The the big thing I I got from from what you were talking about was opportunities presented themselves. You were open and recognized them as opportunities and took them. Yes. Right. Which a lot of times people don't recognize there's an opportunity, and they see the opportunity but don't necessarily take it. So that mm -hmm. was what. You know, that's really, it sounds like that seems like it's the theme throughout your career. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, I've always thought if you're, if you're offered an opportunity, if opportunity knocks, yep. and you can't say, you know, I'm just not ready right now. <laughs> I maybe come back later. <laughs> you know, maybe I'll be ready later. No, because it might not come back. If opportunity exactly. is man, you open that door wide and you let it walk right in and you, you take it. So that's kind of, like I said, that's how we were raised. That's how my mom always taught us. So that's, yeah, it was just natural. It was just so natural for me to be like, well, I can do that. Well, sure, let's give this a try. Well, yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. So tell me a little bit about your leadership style. Um, I, I'm really a mentor. I'm a teacher. I like to teach. Um, I have extensive business classes. Um, I do like to teach. I like to see people grow. I like to share what I know and, and bring others along on my journey with me. Um, it's just, it's more rewarding. And, and I know this is kind of cliche, but it's more rewarding to give than to take, right? It always feels better to give something than receive. And I, I, I believe that I like giving, I like being able to share things and, and teaching things. And I mean, I used to be just a serial volunteer. Um, just so that I could help people and, and teach things and help groups and organizations. And, um, you know, so it's just, that's been my leadership style is I like to, you know, my team is, you know, they're all humans. They're all adults with their own goals and their own wants and needs. And 
and I try to, to teach them whatever they need to, to reach those, even if it has nothing to do with my business. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that because people did that for me. Um, yeah. They were there for me and they, they did that for me. So I'm just kind of paying it forward and, and helping anyone that I well, can. So, yeah. So tell but, me a little bit more about your company. Like who do you serve? Um, who's your, who's your target? Um, our target market for, um, I'll do it separately because they're really two separate. Um, to impress is really focused on businesses. Um, any size, really, we can serve any size business um, for our promotional products and our print and you know, decorated apparel part of it. We can serve anybody. We do small orders. We do large orders. Um, but really, just businesses, groups, events. Um, we just did the Winnebago County Fair, so we can do events. Um, and it's for that part of it, but we also have another part of it where we do e-commerce and we do employee appreciation and we do customer gift giving. And those are really focused on larger or medium to larger size businesses. Um, usually they, uh, I guess we still consider it small, 50 to 50 employees more, where they want a more robust program for their employees, um, a more consistent, more focused way to recognize achievements and anniversaries and things like that. So companies that that want to implement that um, and another growing with the COVID and everyone going remote, that has been huge for us um, companies that have remote employees and they can't just buy something in bulk and hand it out. They have to have a program in place where they can have either the employee order it online. We do a lot of e-commerce sites, a lot of them. And you know the company will have us set up their e-commerce site and then their employee goes on and they can either pick it for themselves and you know then we ship it direct to them and it just saves the company so much time and effort and it's easy and then the, the employee or the customer um, you know has the yeah. fun of doing it and selecting yeah. it so that that's the two impress side of it and that's really what we focus on and then the Fox Valley Team Sports is really the sports side of everything um, and that's kind of gym sports day is youth sports and high school sports and groups and things like that where we do fundraisers we help them with fundraisers we help them with their uniforms we help them with their equipment and getting them you know decked out for the season and their their games and making sure they have everything because coach is the last thing a coach wants to think about is the apparel and the uniforms and right. they just want they're, they're trying to get practice things ready they're trying to get you know kids signed up they're trying to get parents questions answered they don't want to worry about it. They just come <laughs> in and they just come to say, this is how many I need. This is our school colors. Just, you know, send me some ideas and let's get this ordered. And that's what we do. We really, their back end office help getting everything ready so that when game day starts, they're all set. And, you know, if they can get fundraising out of it, then that's right. Excellent. So when did you realize that you had the confidence that you could run your own business? Because, you know, I know you said during your journey that all of a sudden it's like, oh, I do have my own business. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so when I did you... I've just always had it. I just never thought about it. I just did it. So there's really no thinking about, do I have the confidence to do this? Yeah, I can just do that. Sure. I mean, <laughs> and honestly, sometimes maybe too much confidence maybe too much of the sure I can do that um maybe I should stop and think a little bit more and I've been <laughs> told that throughout my career that how have you gotten this far I mean oh my gosh you know you just kind of do things and and I am Jim has helped me a lot with that <laughs> and and honestly um I've sought out a lot of help with that too from outside sources coaches and mentors and other business leaders um yeah because I've always had the confidence and too much confidence and I've actually had to come out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So if you, um, what would you do differently or change if you could go back to the beginning of your career? I would probably seek out the help sooner. Mm -hmm. I would seek out the coaches sooner. I would seek out the mentors sooner um, and put a little bit more thought, you know, maybe <laughs> think before I leave kind of thing just to make sure. I mean, because I, Nothing went perfectly um, when I started any of it. It was not a smooth ride. Um, there were bumps along the way. Um, sure. And I had a lot of learning experiences. Um, and I probably could have avoided a lot of it um, if I had some, 
some input, some insight before I before I just you know barge forward. <laughs> into it. So, yeah, I definitely would have maybe slowed down a little bit. Sure, sure. So, what is a common myth about being the president or CEO or founder that you want to dispel? That you have to know everything. That you are it, you're the world, you know, you have to know everything, you have to be able to solve every problem. Um, and like I said, I didn't seek out a lot of help originally, so that's the mindset I did have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if there was something that went wrong, if there was something that wasn't working, if there was something that needed to be, you know, if there was something I didn't, I had to, you know, instead of asking somebody, I would just research the, the research it to death until I knew it. And that took time and effort, and I wasn't an expert, and I really maybe didn't understand it correctly. And um, yeah, you don't have to know everything. You can't know everything, and you shouldn't know everything. You're supposed to be focused on other things and big things and growing the business, not, you know, they always say work on your business, not in your business, right? Um, and and when you're first starting, sometimes you, you have to work in your business. I'm right. Sorry, you um, but when you start to realize you're not knowing stuff or you're growing and hopefully you're growing and you start to grow fast, like to impress you really fast um, right. beyond what I thought. Um, and, and I just thought I had to do everything. Um, and you know what, um, and this, I, you'll probably get to this. Maybe I'm jumping ahead and I apologize. That's okay. Um, what did slow me down and what helped me during that time was I did hire a coach um, because I was so overwhelmed. So I'm like, right. I I, I'm growing so fast. I need to know the accounting. I'm studying the accounting. Oh my God, now I have to know purchasing. And now I'm doing the purchasing because my other businesses up to that point were all service. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of the time it was just me. I mean, my sales agency, I did have one other sales rep and then an admin, um, which was fine. But, you know, I, there was so much more involved to the purchasing and the customers. And now I was, yes. just, you know, instead of B2B, I was also doing B2C. Um, so I, there was this whole new thing that I had to learn and I did have a coach and, and she really helped me walk through, you know, when she got, you know, get a good accountant, you know, yes. you need a good accountant. So get your good accountant, get a lawyer. Um, yeah. sure you get a good lawyer cause you're going to need that and you're going to have contracts. And I did, you know, got, you know, previously, you know, the companies I rep, they were in charge of contracts. Now I'm in right. charge of all the contracts. So there was a lot I didn't know I didn't know. And seeking out the help showed me that and how to organize it. Otherwise, I probably would have crashed and burned. Um, I really, uh, that's to the point where I was at, that I was going out and I crashed yeah. and burned. Yeah. So I was like, I need help. So yeah, you don't have to know everything. Seek out the help. There's so many places you can get help. There's so many people yeah. willing to help. And I actually, um, you know, there's so many people. I, I hear that from other people. I hear that all the time. It's so true. The reason you hear it is because it's true. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. And I, I, you know, what you're talking about, that's such a common thing for business owners is you feel like you have to do everything and you don't seek out help fast enough and you do crash and burn and it's not always um, financially. It right. might be, you know, it might be in other ways. Right. Mm -hmm. Because people are trying to do too much. So I love that you said that. Um, so um, what is something new that you want to learn? I know you're learning JavaScript and I know you're learning uh, Spanish. Is there anything else new that you want to learn outside of work? Um, I don't do a lot outside of work. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I enjoy it so much. I actually I anything I I any downtime I have, um, like you mentioned, I, I windsurf, um, but I do need a new sail, so I haven't done that. But everything I've been learning has just been, well, how can I improve? What can I improve upon? Um, yeah, I, I don't, coding, I mean, I've been learning coding, um, yeah. with JavaScript and, and more of that. But yeah, I mean, that that's personal and professional fulfillment right there for me. Okay, great. So what areas of your business have you always wanted to become more expert in? Oh, the coding, the IT. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I think that's really, yeah, the IT. Um, I know my accountant would tell me probably accounting, um, but I'm <laughs> not bad at it. But <laughs> yeah, just just being more of the processes, the business processes. And just, Great. You know, I'm a little Great. bit slow. I get a little excited about my project projects, like the growth part of it and getting things started and getting things going. And then I got to backtrack yeah. and actually take the steps to get there properly. Excellent. So what's the next big thing for you and your business? Like, you know, one to three years out. Oh, um, we are currently working on, well, right now, like our employee, our employee incentive programs and our gift giving programs on the Chrome Press side. Um, we have one that is our own proprietary program. And then we also have two that we use vendors for um, just because they have bigger warehouses and a little bit more reach um, as far as what the gifts can be. And what we're working on is kind of either through just growing ourselves or acquisition, um, bringing it all in-house and having our own, basically a build your own program um, okay. where customers can kind of pick and choose what they want to offer and we'll, we'll implement that. I've already got that started. So hopefully, yeah, for sure, between one and three years to get that going and, and bring that to market. And I think that'll be huge because right now you really are limited in the industry. It's a huge industry. But right. There, everyone uses the same vendors and the same programs. And then this would be something different. This would be a pick your own. This would be build your own. So the customer could actually bring it more in house, a little bit more control on their end. And it would take less pressure off of us because we spend a lot of time building these programs and maintaining these programs. And, yeah. and it's, it's a lot of work. Um, and this would actually give it, and a lot of companies now, they're more IT savvy and they do have their own IT people. And so they can kind of maintain them themselves and they, they do want that. They voice that to me. We want to be able to do this. And right now we can't, we can't. I mean, a lot of it is ours. We have to do it. So this program will allow them to do a little bit more. It's more integrated. Um, they would have access to APIs that right now we don't have access to. So that's our big, big project. And in addition to that, because we realized this would be a lot of hand holding for the customer when they're getting started um, and learning how to use this. We are going to have outside sales reps right now. We do not have outside sales reps because so much is done in house, but we're going to have outside sales reps have already looked into how we're going to form that and the payment schedule and all of that. Um, so that is, yay, end of this year, kind of getting that going. So I want sales reps, like going back to my roots, right? Um, sure. Sales reps back out there and and helping our customers implement these programs in their locations so that yeah everyone's it's, everyone's got um everyone's a win win. Excellent. And then on the Fox Valley Team Sports side of it, um, that really we don't have too much. <laughs> That's kind of a it runs its own self. It's kind of the same industry. Um, so that we no, I don't know. You have to check that. <laughs> So, Candy, it sounds like you have been really blessed with some incredible people who helped you along your journey. Um, what would you like to say to them? Um, really, thank you so much um, for not discouraging me, for for encouraging me. Um, so many different people. Um, I mean, when I was young, you mentioned I was a teen mom. I ended up in a homeless shelter um, and it was run by nuns and oh. they were amazing. They're the ones who encouraged me, you know, you need to stay in school, you need to get life skills, you got a child. Um, I had a teacher in school because honestly, I was at a very low point and I was going to drop out of high school because I had so much going on. And I had a teacher come to the homeless shelter and she said, you cannot drop out you're too smart and I am going to tutor you and you're going to graduate high school. And I was like, okay, <laughs> sure. <let's do> <laughs> um, and she did it. So Ms. Costa, thank you from the bottom of my heart um, for getting me through that um, because it has helped tremendously. Um, so yeah, just everyone, Steve Dorfler at Metalcraft for giving me the opportunity to go out and become an independent rep um, when I had no experience and you know, no idea what I was doing. And he said, sure, you can do this. Um, so thank you. Thank you everybody for, for the 
encouragement and the belief in me and letting me run wild for my boyfriend for letting me run <laughs> wild with my crazy ideas now and never really saying, oh, you don't want to do that. He'd just say, have we thought about that? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but he never discourages me either. So yeah, I I truly, Jackie, I have been truly blessed in my life with so yes. many good people that have saw something in me, and I am so thankful they did. And yeah, so thank you so much, everybody. Well, and you know, it sounds like it, it's they've helped you, but also you have you have you did it too. Right. And, mm -hmm. and look at all of the wonderful things because people have encouraged you and mentored you all the incredible things and your incredible children and grandchildren. So it's oh, all yeah. of those things pass on for generations and generations. So um, I'm so happy for you. That's awesome. Thank so you. Candy, it was such a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, Jackie, has been so fun. I really enjoyed sharing my story. And I hope that somebody out there who's struggling and maybe at a low point in their career, um, you know, that they realize they can do it. Um, there's going to be challenges, but you can overcome them. You, I mean, don't think that this is the end. Just seek out other solutions. Seek help. Seek help. Seek help. Excellent.